Financial goal can mean different things to different people. Uh, our next speaker, John Bodine, affectionately known as Johnny B, is a long-time client. Very long, he reminded me the, uh, the other day. And um, with the help of our financial planning, he turned an avocation into a vocation. And many years ago, John said to me, you know, I'm a beekeeper and I, I like to make honey. Okay, fine. Well now, willow bee apiaries, nestled in the green mountains of Vermont, produces some of the best tasting honey you'll ever have and serves local restaurants, farmers markets, and retail shops. In addition, John has ventured into syrup making. Elmore Mountain Maple Works is in its second year of tapping sugar bushes in the northeast region of Vermont. I think he's got a sweet tooth. So Johnny B is going to come up and spend a couple of minutes talking about a little something you're going to get before you leave tonight. John? Anybody else here from Vermont? I don't think so. I think we get the, uh, the Long Distance Travel Award for being here tonight. Um, I'd say good evening. And uh, talk to the mic. There we go. Right. Well, I know I'm the only thing between you and dessert, so I promise to keep this quick and sweet. Um, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of uh, my wife, Ellen, and myself. And uh, we'd like to thank Investmark, especially Jay, and Scott, and Nick, for uh, inviting us to share our story with you here tonight. Uh, so I'm not sure, but... I really think that we might have been one of Jay's first clients. And uh, Jay and I had an opportunity to talk about that a little bit earlier this evening. Uh, does the name Royal Alliance ring a bell with anyone? No? No. Okay. Well, that's how far back uh, Jay and I go. He showed up in a, in a beat up old Mercedes at our first house that uh, Ellen and I bought in Quaker Hill back in 1985. People familiar with Bishop's Orchards down in Guilford? Okay, well, uh, Al Bishop, who was, uh, I believe, the first owner of Bishop's Orchard, was my 4-H leader uh, back when I was 12 years old. And he introduced uh, a love of beekeeping to me uh, and several of our other 4-H members whose parents weren't quite so enthusiastic about beekeeping. And I wound up with uh, a number of hives uh, down in Guilford. Uh, over the years, I uh, managed to go from being a, a hobbyist to uh, what they call a sideliner, uh -huh. which is someone who has somewhere between 10 and 25 hives on a, on a regular basis. It used to be a lot easier to be a sideliner, but as you probably read in the paper, there have been a lot of uh, problems with bees, especially honeybees, but all the pollinators right now are, are experiencing some real problems. Uh, colony collapse disorder has been in the newspaper a lot recently, and uh, there's a number of reasons why honeybees are, are struggling, but uh, all of the publicity around it has been a good thing because it's generated a lot of interest in beekeeping, and now uh, I spoke to a couple of folks here tonight who have actually taken up the hobby of beekeeping themselves. And, uh, there's a lot of urban beekeepers, which is always a good thing. Uh, I've been doing it now for about 45 years, and it's gotten, gotten to be a lot harder than it used to be. Uh, of course, trying to satisfy and keep 60,000 women happy is never a, an easy task. I don't know if you know it or not, but a, a honeybee colony is made up primarily of female workers. Uh, I was just telling Nick right now, it's not a good time to be a male bee in a, in a honeybee hive right now. And the male bees are called drones. And this time of the year, the females take all the drones and drag them out of the hive. And they say, okay guys, your fun's over. You're out of here. It's basically, males serve one purpose, and that's to fertilize a queen. That's been taken care of already this season. They have no other purpose, so the, the females drag them out, leave them to starve, and freeze to death out in front of the hive. Um, <laughs> 
So don't don't uh, get too comfortable there on the couch with your beer, guys. <laughs> um, Nick mentioned that uh, I've recently uh, become a maple sugar maker, and that's been a real adventure for me, and it's turned into a real passion. Uh, I love being outside in the woods. I love the cold. It's one of the reasons I moved to Vermont. I really have never done very well in the heat. And uh, although climate change has me a little worried about even living in Vermont. Um, but uh, we're, tonight, we're delighted to bring some of our delicious gifts down from the mountains of Vermont to you. And that's courtesy of Investmark. And uh, we really appreciate their supporting us, and uh, we're very pleased to be able to send you home with a pretty sweet gift. Uh, like Investmark, uh, we strive to offer quality products also, and we take pride in knowing that we're delivering the best that we can to our customers. And we value our personal relationships that we've developed over the years uh, with our customers as well. One of the greatest joys that we have is that our children are now living and working with us in Vermont on the farm. And my oldest son, Ethan, and his wife, Erin, are continuing the family tradition by now becoming clients of Investmark as well. So we're into a second generation here with you guys. Um, I could talk for a long time about honeybees and maple sugaring, but uh, they asked me to keep it under five minutes, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> and just say that Ellen and I have enjoyed talking and meeting with many of you this evening. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to take a look at our little display over there, there's some information on what we do and, and where we're located. There's some brochures there that we invite you to bring home with you, along with your gift. Um, when you do pick up your gifts, make sure you take one of those brochures. It's got our uh, website and uh, Facebook address and email address and all those things that you have to do to be in business these days. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you some more after the dinner. If anyone has any questions or would like to get some more information about what we're doing, we'd be happy to talk to you before we leave. So. I think that's it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening here and enjoy your gifts when you get home. Uh, you'll be all sweeter for it, I guarantee you.